Tel Saki, which became a oh, legend. So let's, course, let's uh-huh. talk about right. Tel Saki for yeah. a second. So Tel Saki became a legend and also yeah. a Netflix, Netflix series, series yeah. right? Uh, it's famous called one. Valley of Tears, was created based on the true events of this story. Uh, we're, we're privileged to actually um, get a glimpse into what happened in Tel Saki um, with uh, Yaakov S- uh, Selavan. That's his last name, Yaakov Selavan. And he is... And he is going to uh, walk us through it. Wow. Yeah. My name is Yaakov Selvan. I'm an IDF major in reserves. I was born and raised in the old city of Jerusalem. 34 years ago, my parents are American. They made Aliyah in the late 70s. And I moved up here to the Golan nine years ago due to my military service. I served and I still serve in a tank unit, which is called the 188. This was a unit that was established originally to protect the border with Syria, which we're just 4,000 feet away from. And even though today we operate all around Israel, the heart of the unit is here in the Golan. So I moved up here with my family so I can be close to where I serve. I left the army at the end of 2016. And in the past six years, I've been serving in the unit, also in an operational job and also as the unit's heritage officer. My responsibility is to pass on the heritage of the unit, of the battles of the past, to the soldiers of today, to the younger generation. When I'm asked to explain what exactly do I do with the young soldiers, I always tell people I'm a motivational speaker. Now, how do you motivate an IDF soldier dedicating the three best years of his life for his country? The answer is tell him a good story. The most incredible story the Israeli army has to offer happened here at Tel Saki on October 6, 1973 with that it's Yom Kippur, the holiest day in the Jewish calendar. Let's go back in the time tunnel and understand what happened there. While the people of Israel are focused on the prayers of the holy day, Egypt and Syria simultaneously attack Israel. This is a great strategic surprise. And I wanna zoom in to the young soldiers in the front line. On this hill, Tel Saki, literally on the Syrian border, just 4,000 feet away, There is a young commander from the Israeli paratroopers named Menachem. He's here with five soldiers on an ordinary lookout mission. No one is expecting a war. Menachem, who happens to be religious, orthodox, comes on this hill with five of his soldiers. No one's preparing for war. And so what he does is he tries praying while the rest of the soldiers are resting in a small bunker that is here on the top of the hill. A few minutes before 2 p.m., the war breaks out. Menachem and just a handful of paratroopers and just below this hill, three tanks from the 188 Armored Brigade, my unit, are facing a mass Syrian attack. For the first few hours, a handful of Israeli paratroopers and three Israeli tanks managed to stop more than 50 Syrian tanks. They are doing an incredible job. But then the night comes down. When the night comes down, there's a turning point in the battle. Our soldiers cannot see a thing. They don't have night vision. The Syrians do, and they run out of heavy ammunition. They have no missiles left. The commanders make a decision. They will stay in place without missiles, just light machine gun fire, and try facing the mass Syrian breakthrough. The Syrians invade into Israel. The soldiers are under pressure. The Syrians are getting closer and closer. They need help. There are attempts to reinforce the guys here from the Israeli Air Force through teams of Israeli tanks and even Israeli paratroopers that try coming here as the Syrians are getting closer and closer to the hill and it's a face-to-face battle. They try coming here to rescue their friends. Unfortunately, all of these attempts fail. Many soldiers are killed. Very few survive. The casualties are heavy. The soldiers on the sill are running out of ammunition. And when the sun rises on the morning of October 7, 1973, Yud Aleph Tishrei, Tafshin Lamed Dalet, Menachem, the commander of the hill, understands the game is over. The Syrians are there. The Syrians are there. The Syrians are there. And Syria is right there. 
The Syrians are all over the place. They are surrounding this hill. No one was able to help them. Many people have died trying to help them. And as we said, they're shooting their last bullets. They lost the battle. What do you do when you lose? You're surrounded by Syrians. No one can help you. Many people have died trying to help you. And you cannot retreat. You cannot pull back because you're surrounded. That leaves the soldiers only one last option, to hide. And the only place they can hide in is the small bunker on the top of the hill. On the early morning hours of October 7, 1973, Yud Aleph Tishrei Tafshin Lamedalet, Menachem, a young 21-year-old commander, leads 27 Israeli soldiers into this small bunker. 28 people, mostly wounded, some critically wounded, no food, no water, no ammunition, no way to protect themselves. They come into this bunker. The Syrians come up the hill and they surround the bunker. We could imagine it would take the Syrians between one to five minutes to kill all the soldiers there. However, 20 Seven out of 28 soldiers managed to survive. They're in this bunker for 36 hours until the Israeli army is able to come and rescue them. That's 36 hours where you're hungry, you're thirsty, you're wounded, you're petrified. The Syrians are just outside. You can hear their voices. Every minute is the last minute of your life. What makes the story of Tel Saki different than others is that this story is more than a regular military story. This is a human story. Think about the young soldiers who just fought the battle of their life to protect this country, but the Syrians took over the region. Now, they're fighting for their own survival. In this room, it's not a story of war heroes fighting for their country. It's a story of young 19, 20, 21 year olds who don't care about winning or losing anymore. They just want to survive. They just want to get home to their mamas. You can understand that 36 long hours in this room, there are many incredible moments and mainly many incredible dilemmas. What do you do when you have Syrian soldiers standing at the doorstep to this room. Do you attack? Do you wait? What do you do if while the Syrians are standing by this bunker and you need to be perfectly silent, one of your wounded friends who is deaf and does not understand what's happening around him starts yelling for water, endangering everyone in here? And what do you do if the Syrians start attacking this bunker and you understand it's up to you to stand on your feet and walk out, hand yourself into the Syrians and convince them that everyone here is dead. These dilemmas, these examples I gave are all stories that happened in this bunker. But I'd like to take you to the untold story of this battle. The first battle was outside when the young soldiers, paratroopers and tankists are fighting the Syrians to stop them from invading the Golan Heights. When the Syrians conquer the region, the second battle begins, the battle of survival here in this bunker. The third battle is the battle that is still raging. These soldiers were rescued by the Israeli army 36 hours later. They left the bunker, but they didn't live happily ever after. You might be able to leave this bunker. It doesn't mean the bunker leaves you. These soldiers live this battle every single day. At night when they go to sleep, this is probably the last thing they see, these walls. In the morning, when they wake up, it's probably the first thing they see. They're on this hill. Wow, what? listen. Wow. 